And thank you, Javier. In other news, the youth leaders wanted to organize their own youth conference to help their peers identify ways and they can help be engaged in their communities. Well, what exactly are we talking about? Well, here to tell us what separates Bronxworth Youth Power, Bronx Works, I should say, Youth Power Summit from other conferences is Sharice Palomino, Bronx Works Sexual Health Education Coordinator, and youth leader Florence and Kruma. And thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Thank you for having us. Good. So you have this opportunity for young people to get together. And it's going to be what's called a power summit. Right. And so what kind of empowering are we doing? And what kind of power summit is it? Well, the objective of the Youth Power Summit was to have youth leaders like Florence and the other youth leaders that we have at Bronx Works help organize and invite um, other organizations and other youth to facilitate workshops on social issues that impact our community. There are going to be workshops on sexual health, college readiness, the school to prison pipeline, leadership. And so the purpose of this was to educate and inform young people so that they can take what they learn and empower themselves, hopefully change themselves, change their world and their community. Florence, you've been trying to get youth involved in this and it's really important for you to, for youth to have a dialogue. Talk to us about how you guys were able to really just get youth involved. Well, we organize a lot of events and we also have a great mentor, Cherise, who help us in like ways to reach out to the community. We have multiple events on a regular basis, like an HIV haunted house, which we work with younger kids just to teach them about HIV and just being, like, staying sexually safe. We also did a World AIDS Day workshop. We did the same thing with the kids. We also do a lot of community outreach and kind of distributions and just staying involved in that community and just engaging others as well. And you're around a lot of youth, so what, what are the conversations and what are the topics that, that young people are really talking about right now? Young people right now is a lot of social media. I realize that a lot of kids are so involved in social media they don't really see the other opportunities outside of it. So that's what the Youth Power Summit is about, to just get youth involved and just to get them like moving in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And we have a documentary that we um, purchased the license to to, um, to show. It's called Sexy Baby, and it chronicles three young women, um, one who's 12 to 14, and they're kind of chronicling their lives as they're trying to navigate um, the media and social media in general and navigating over sexualization and how they are developing and growing in this age of in this digital age and so um, we have um, youth leaders who are going to once we show the documentary we'll have some youth leaders facilitate the discussion about it and hopefully that we can open some minds of young people and let them see like what what's out there isn't what you have to use to define yourself and the standards that you see in the media are not necessarily the beauty ideals you have to embrace and so we want them to walk away with some really great information and knowledge and opportunities to really impact their own communities and empower themselves mm -hmm. give a little bit about the workshops that you'll be talking about well our program our facility and workshop on sexual consent as well as our advocacy called Hashtag Enforce the Mandate. We also have the School to Prison Pipeline, leadership workshops, and just a lot of different things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and, when, and when youth are having these conversations, what are some of the things that you're hearing from them in, in regards to some of the topics that you're discussing? Well, a lot of topics are like something that's going on that people hear about, but they don't really know the depth of what it is or don't really raise too much conversations about it. So these workshops will help them. Some of the things they already learned about, they know about the school to prison pipeline and to a certain extent. They kind of know about sexual consent, but just to a certain extent. So these things will just give them the extra information and also teach them how to be involved and to engage themselves in those kind of things. Is it hard to motivate you to have these kind of discussions? It depends on the discussion. I mean, when it comes to sexual health, um, young people are very much mo self-motivated because they want to learn. It's something that's interesting and one of the things that I know from doing this work is that there isn't a lot of education that's happening around sexual health, comprehensive sexual health in public schools and then there are some parents, not all, but some parents who don't have the conversation with their kids and so they are wanting more information, asking questions and so these are, these are things that they are definitely interested in and it makes it easier because they have that interest to be able to engage them in this topic. Mm -hmm. So if people want to come out now, it's Saturday between 9 and 4 and then you come out to the uh, Bronx West Community Center on 146th Street in the Bronx and you can be a part of this uh, conversation and dialogue and uh, you're looking forward to, uh, of course you want the public to be a part of this. 
community? Absolutely. It's a community. It's open to the community. Um, our target population is youth, but we want adults to be there too. We want young people to see that there are caring adults in the community that are impacting them. And then there are things that adults can learn from the young people as well. So it would be great to have adults attend as well. Do you have any hopes like, okay, so now we have the conference, and then what? <laughs> what, what happens after that? That they're walking away excited, empowered, feeling like they're going to be able to make a difference in their communities, that they take the tools that they are learned because some of the workshops are facilitated by youth. Mm -hmm. So basically all the workshops are facilitated by youth, but some of them are co-facilitated with an adult. Where, For example, like the sexual consent, I'm facilitating that with one of our youth leaders. And so being able to take that information and doing something with it, take actionable steps after they go attend the Youth Power Summit, and that's why we wanted to emphasize it's a Youth Power Summit, because young people can empower themselves, and they can use their power to make a lasting difference. What is it like for you being a youth leader and being involved at the forefront of also planning a conference and then, you know, providing leadership? What does that mean for you as a, as a young person? It means a lot to me, and well, I've been really involved in my community since the eighth grade, but this is like a different kind of experience because I normally work with kids at a daycare. So I'm getting to know a lot of things and also learn about public speaking and just basically being more confident and also like doing a lot of community work. So it means a lot, especially going to college. I need this type of experience, engaging with others and just moving forward. And talking about college and you have these young people who are actually engaged in leadership. Right. What does that do for them, taking them to the next level, exposing them to have the opportunity to put together a conference, be a leader, speak? What does that mean for them at the next level? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because our keynote speaker is one of our former youth leaders named Rocio Perez, who um, is coming back this year. Uh, she's a freshman at the College of St. Rose, and so she's going to talk about how being a part of this program really changed her life, it empowered her, and now she's a leader on her college campus where she can educate people about sexual health and making better and smarter and healthier choices. And so that you know, she is the prime example of the great work that we do at Bronx Works, and so we're excited to have her come and speak to um, our audience. We're expecting at least 200 young people. There's going to be programs from Brooklyn and Harlem and in the Bronx, of course, and so this does make a difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so having Rocio come back and being able to talk about what she's done last year. We traveled to San Francisco last year to attend the Youth Tech and Health Conference. And so they were able to learn there, come back, and apply this stuff in the Bronx. And so she's able to talk about this experience. And we're excited to have it because it does make a difference. Like these are, we're basically laying the foundation for them to take it to the next level when they get to college. And so they're building, these are building blocks for them right now. Mm -hmm. So when they do get to college, they have that leadership, they have the organizational skills, they have the critical thinking skills, and they have the skills to make better decisions about their future. What's the biggest thing you learned since being a youth leader? Um, I've learned a lot about having confidence in public speaking because normally, I, like I said before, I don't do these type of things, so it's a new environment. And it's just a challenge. You have to have determination and just have a great work ethic and just keep on. So you start off public speaking, they throw you on TV, they put you in front of everybody. You never know what happens, right? Yeah. On TV, very short notice. Yeah. Uh, very short notice, right? Yeah. Well, you did a wonderful <laughs> job. And want to thank you for coming. Thank you very Florence much. Florence Kruma is here with us. And then we also want to thank Sharice Palomino. Thank, thank you so you. much thank for coming. Thank you so much for having thank us. You. No, no problem. Once again, we want to give you the information. Now, if you want to find out more about it, we're going to let you know this Saturday is the day that you can come on out. Saturday between 9 to 4, uh, Bronx Works Community Center. That is at 547 East 146th Street. There you see it. Uh, for more information, you got the website down there. And so make sure that you get an opportunity to go and be a part of this wonderful uh, youth gathering, a, a time for empowerment. And hopefully you can make time to go on out and be a part of it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Well, guess what? Unfortunately, we are about out of show. It's been a pleasure coming to your homes. want to thank our guests for joining us and most of all, you, the viewer, for tuning in. Now, if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the re-cablecast at 5 p.m. and then 10 p.m. on Cablevision's Channel 67. If you have Verizon Files, catch us on Channel 33. Or you can watch us anytime on the World Wide Web at www.bronxnet.org. We encourage you to have a great week. And most of all, don't forget to keep your heart, your mind, and most of all, this channel wide open. Take care.